Hey everybody, it is 8.16 a.m. Sunday, October 1st, 2017. Yep, we are finally in October, and just as we were getting into October, check out what was filmed on Smith's Point in Long Island. This is a water spout, basically a water tornado, guys, and this one's pretty big for uh, the Northeast. Uh, there's a couple videos of this online. I believe this one was filmed by uh, Billy Cork. Uh, you can find him on Twitter. Uh, Billy Cork would be one word, obviously, for a Twitter handle. B-I-L-L-Y-C-O-R-K. And then the numbers 234 um, is his Twitter handle. So if you want to go over and say hi to him, tell him great job on the video. This is really cool. I'm going to uh, run through it with the cursor here. I don't want to uh, go through any copyright issues. Uh, again, that's Billy Cork. It's his video, so go check him out. Um, and you move forward here, and you can see it. You can see Spin in here, guys. Check it out on YouTube also. There is a channel that posted it on YouTube. Uh, but very cool to see. These are semi-rare in the Northeast. Uh, I brought up some little bit of literature on it on WikiLeaks. I will post this in the description box below, too. But it just gives you some basic information on uh, why they form, where they form, where is it common, where is it uncommon. Um, all sorts of pictures and stuff, so really cool. There's even uh, snow versions of these. Um, I've actually seen one on video, so and I forgot that I'd seen it. Um, I thought it was actually part of a movie clip, but it was actually a real video. So that's pretty cool to see these things in snow. Uh, you see little tiny ones with the leaves in your backyard even. So we know those uh, that cyclone deal uh, happens all over the place. But uh, just a cool thing to check out. Um, another thing I want you guys to look at as far as our space weather goes, pretty cool here. And here is our Lasco 3 camera. This is the camera we were using to check out that comet that uh, either hit the sun or it was burnt up by the sun because we did not see it exit out the other side, which means uh, chances are it's gone. It would be rare if it left uh, or if it rounded the sun, survived without us seeing it. We would see it on this camera pretty clear, actually. This or the Lasco C2 cam, which is a little bit of a zoom. It's that red version. But uh, check this out. This is actually Mercury moving in from the right to the left, and the reason it looks like that is because Mercury's orbit around the Sun is faster than ours. It's closer. So uh, we picture Earth behind this camera view, and we are constantly moving with the orbit of Earth, always lined up. It looks like we're not moving at all. It looks like the stars are moving, but it's us moving around the Sun, and then Mercury's uh, movement is quicker than ours. And I pulled up Solar System Scope, which is a really cool website. Uh, just go to solarsystemscope.com and you can uh, mess around with this uh, interactive map thing. But I have this set for right now. This is the actual time. And if you notice, uh, it's not to scale, obviously. I can change it to scale to show you guys. But here's Mercury uh, behind the sun. It looks like it's totally behind the sun. But if you change the settings to realistic, you can see why we can actually see this the way it is. And this is Mercury moving into the frame. <clears throat> Uh, as we move forward here, you see Mercury moving right to left, and that's why we're seeing that happen. It's just moving quicker than our orbit, even though we are moving too. If I back it up here, this is basically the view we have right now. Mercury to the upper right. You move it forward, and eventually Mercury is going to pass our entire frame on this camera, like this. And then eventually, uh, sometime in early November, we're going to see Venus enter the screen from right to left as well because Venus's orbit is also quicker than ours. It's a tighter orbit around the Sun. And it's going to be a while before we see Mars or anything. There is a chance we get to see Jupiter in uh, December, January, or February, I believe. But we'll talk about that when the time comes. But again, guys, really cool website, Solar System Scope. You could play with all the planets, their orbits, and you know see what's happening in the future. There's actually a really crazy planet alignment on uh, July 4th, 2020. I have that on my channel if you guys want to check it out. Pretty crazy. But uh, that's some space stuff for you. One more thing I want to point out here, guys. It's really cool. There is some sort of object floating around in our view right now uh, on the Las Lasco C3. And I'm going to try to point that out to you here. It's going to be a little hard to see for those of you on cell phones and stuff. But if you guys make it to a laptop, I suggest you watch this because it's really interesting. Now, again, on Solar System Scope, there's nothing in our view that could possibly be out here and these stars are moving in sync because they're not really moving. It's us moving around the sun. So that's why all the stars that you see, all these bright dots, are in sync. They always stay in motion and within the same uh, space of each other. But there is one thing. If you look where my cursor is, look at that one dot that's lagging behind. That is a physical object, and it's being caught on this camera and the Lasco C2. 
So there is something out there. We don't know if it's a comet or if it's a rogue planet. I have seen uh, people submit uh, visuals they see um, off these charts to NASA and stuff like that to see if they'll acknowledge it. They usually don't, of course. Why would they? But guys, that is an object deep in space that is orbiting uh, obviously slower than our turn around the sun. And you can see it. It's, it's there. It's a physical object. This camera would not pick this up for this long if it wasn't really something out there. Here's my mouse. Check right above the mouse. You see how it's moving. It's like lagging behind the speed of the stars. So our orbit isn't quick enough to keep this up with the star movements. Or what seems to be star movements. But that is an object. And then you see Mercury enter the frame from right to left here. And that's what I have as of now. So I'm going to keep watching this object. Very weird. Check that out. Could be a comet, could be a rogue planet, who knows? But there it is for the world to see. And uh, that's it for the space stuff, guys. Really quick, let's see what our uh, hurricane models are showing. I'll have a much detailed update later on in the afternoon, but they've basically removed that second disturbance from being a possibility here that we've been talking about. And then our first one is actually down to a zero, zero chance. So they don't think it's going to form at all. We talked about this extensively last night about those shear winds that are currently not allowing these storms to form, but at the same time, by the time the 4th, 5th, and probably the 6th comes, that's when that uh, shear wind loop is going to lift very high, and then we have a storm that is said to form right away after that. And again, guys, that has to do with all the action going on in the Caribbean. All these storms going on, all the water vapor, the warm water, and the wind conditions. It's just very chaotic in here now. We still see that defined counterclockwise spin, but again, they don't believe it's going to form because of those shear winds that we showed on Ventu Sky coming right down from the north and basically just pushing everything down back into the Caribbean, back into the south part of the Gulf, not allowing it to form. But still, guys, that doesn't mean this weather isn't existing here. They're just not formed as cyclone formations. Uh, Florida still going to get a lot of rain. We showed some uh, rain um, inches charts. Uh, I expect that to rise. You could see this whole system here is going to move up into Florida. We got some storms exploding in the center of Florida. Just a lot going on here, guys. And again, just like blowing on a fan, the second you stop blowing that air onto the fan, it's going to kick back up and it's going to start spinning faster. Uh, and that's what's going to happen here in the Gulf. The second these shear winds lift off and move up into the north, it's going to allow all this stuff to form here. And we have a constant counterclockwise motion going here. We got some clockwise motion going here, but we see how quickly that changes. All you need is a little bit of influence, and these storms begin to push up air through the middle, and then air on the outside tries to come in to replace that air, and that's how you get your spin. That's what causes these spins, and if you get enough storms, they start to clean together. And if the shear winds are too weak, you get tropical depressions. So that's what we're looking out for here, and those shear winds to lift up between the 4th and 5th. And then according to these charts, guys, by the 4th and 5th, the second that happens, pretty much, we are dealing with storms. This is the European model we're going to run through really quick. Maria and Lee, I'm so tired of those names, but... They're almost gone completely from existence. <clears throat> Ire uh, Ireland and London getting, oh, horrible weather coming up soon. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so here is October 8th, guys. Just like we said, by the 5th, 6th, or 7th, those shear winds lift up, and we've already got a system getting pulled up from the, the Caribbean here. Uh, European models don't show it as defined as the Canadian model does, but nonetheless, possibility of a hurricane, tropical storm here. Um, a low pressure coming off the northeast. We're going to be getting a lot of these um, in the next couple of weeks, guys. These big systems coming off Canada and then dropping right into the northeast. And some of them are even, are even entering the ocean here and then reforming as cyclones. So we got to keep an eye on this stuff. We know how storms can loop around and do circles just like uh, Jose did for a while. It's a little harder to do this time of year because the most of the warm water is in the Caribbean, the Gulf, and then that western belt we watch for the the uh, storm systems coming off of the West African coast. So again, here is the Europeans. They have that system coming through between the 8th, 9th, and 10th, and then maybe moving out to sea. We don't know yet, but we'll check out the Canadian model. And they have a major hurricane showing for the Gulf of Mexico. So we're going to check that out. And again, guys, timeline is exactly the same. Here is that system I'm still watching uh, that I think is going to be named, or at least given an invest uh, name, um, an investigative look. 
uh, West African coast here, coming right off here, moving down the western belt that we call for the warm water. We move forward here, the low, another low, another low. So guys, remember these lows that we talked about all have potential to become tropical depressions. And then there we have it. At this point right here, we have three storms going on. One in the middle of the Atlantic, closer to Bermuda. Then we got this low here. And then this is the storm that um, I'm beginning to get concerned about that is shown to pop up just as those shear winds lift off. And look at the date, guys. We're at the 8th. That's exactly when that pressure is being lifted off uh, from the shear winds that are coming down through Florida that we talked about last night. And just as that happens, major storm right over Florida. This could change, guys. This is not a warning to Florida to go start getting prepared. This is still nine days out, eight days out. Plenty of time to prepare. We don't even know if it's going to go into Florida or the Gulf or if it's going to form at all. All I'm showing you is the data we have available right now. And the conditions are right, guys. The second those shear winds lift off, it's game on in the Caribbean. And it's unfortunate, but it's true. And there we have it, guys. Then we have a big connection to these two systems all over the northeast. This might bring a lot of bad weather to the northeast. Just check out the size of this thing. Look how big it is, covering the entire state of Florida except for a little bit of the panhandle. And then we move it up, it goes into water, which might not be good, and then reforms, and then goes over Georgia, South, and North Carolina. And then look at the entire east coast here because of this system. Just totally drenched. And also look at the low pressure, 989. If this is 989 when this system hits here, even if it's not a hurricane, this is going to do some serious flooding and stuff like that, at least to the northeast coast. And then add the cold weather on top of it, the fall weather, just not good conditions. And also, guys, look, we still have systems coming off West Africa here. Uh, we got this system here. So just a lot of activity going on. So the only thing helping us right now are these shear winds that are keeping these storms out of the Caribbean and out of the Gulf. They're not letting them form. They're trying to form. All the ingredients are there, but the shear winds rip them apart. And we talked about those shear winds last night. One more time, I'll move through it. Here's that system forming uh, between... Well, basically, it's going right into the Gulf, it looks like to me. And if you remember two nights ago, it actually showed it coming up this way, pivoting, and then going into Florida. So again, we know that these paths will change. The Canadian models are not good with the paths of storms. They're good at when they form. Back this up again. Just take, keep, look a little Fujiwara going on here. I love saying that word now. There we go. See, it just whips around. This system is pretty significant. This will more than likely go up to Ireland and London, those areas. And then this again, this is just crazy right there. That forming, connecting, and eventually you get pushed out by the jet stream, but not before it gets to the east coast. So just, and then this one, this one is uh, a second storm that we're seeing coming off the west coast of Africa. Look at all the lows that come off still of the west African coast. We have this one here. Watch all the L's. There's one. There was two. There's three. There's four. All right, so we counted four just in the next nine days. So, again, guys, something to look out for. I'll have a much bigger update later on for you. Uh, here, we're going to get into some of the weather going on in this area by uh, Mimal the Elf. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that, but it's M-I-M-A-L, Minnesota, Iowa, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, makes up this big elf here. It looks like there's his nose, there's his hat. So we'll talk about some of these systems coming up through this area, and we're definitely going to talk more about Florida. All right, guys, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll talk to you this afternoon. See you later.